Intednib has a unique safety profile. It's highlighted by the potential to cause diarrhea and tramzanemonitis as its main toxicities. However, in my personal experience, I've not found these to be a particular issue. Patients should be counselled against the risk of diarrhea and the potential to use loperamide if they have symptoms. But in general day-to-day -day clinical practice, diarrhea doesn't seem to be a major problem. Transaminitis can be observed as it is with many other kinase inhibitors. But again, in clinical practice, this doesn't seem to be a major problem and much more frequent monitoring than one would normally use when giving a monthly TKI doesn't seem to be particularly indicated. When using a combination of docetaxel and nintednib, the two should be used together. Nintednib is not given on the same days of administration as docetaxel. Generally, one would want to carry on with combination for as long as possible, but in real life, after about four to six cycles, patients start developing quite significant fatigue and sometimes neuropathy with the docetaxel. In that setting, one would want to potentially discontinue or dose reduce the docetaxel. And if one is considering dos uh, discontinuing the docetaxel or one does discontinue the docetaxel, it would be entirely appropriate as per the regime to carry on, on nintednib monotherapy in a maintenance phase. Having regular assessment of the patient with response evaluation imaging, discontinuing at point of meaningful progression. There are two side effects that I think we see with an interanib, and, and we need to be aware of those side effects. And the first is uh, diarrhea, and diarrhea comes frequently with many types of treatment, and it's something that we need to train our patients to manage, and we need to be there for them when they develop this problem, because there's actually supportive measures that can, that can deal with this problem. So usually offering loperamide and give dietary ad advice will be enough to manage this adverse event. It is a problem that sort of comes and goes. So it's not a constant problem, but it will appear from time to time in some of the patients, roughly 30% of the patients who are on nintedanib. We do see GI talks also with docetaxel, and sometimes it's difficult to know whether this, this adverse event is really related to docetaxel or nintedanib, but it doesn't make too much of a difference because the management is the same. The second uh, adverse events that we see with nintedanib is elevated liver enzymes. So we need to be observant of the biochemistry of these patients and the only way to manage that adverse event is really to dose reduce and usually a simple dose reduction of 20% will, uh, will actually take care of this problem and make the liver enzymes decrease again. Only very rarely is it necessary to discontinue an insertinib treatment. 